after uh, this is interesting about the sadness that I was approached by several individuals uh, along with the commissioner uh, about the same time this was getting some, some momentum in our office about what is going on that not only just impacts um, every, every corner of the city but also in the county department in a big way. Uh, Sheriff, I'd like to ask you, uh, Sheriff Bobbier, and then there's a, the actual declaration itself, I think we need to cover that as well. Uh, I think we all know the border is a, is a mess. Uh, we see different aspects of it other than our partners there on the border seeing the more of the human uh, side of the smuggling and trafficking of people. Uh, a lot of what we're seeing here is, is the drug smuggling, which, which every, we're not unique. Uh, every county is like it. Huge influx of fentanyl. It is killing a lot of people. And it's a direct, direct result of that border being not secure, without a doubt. And uh, I don't know what we can do up here, you know, being 450 miles away from it, but, uh, but we're still Texans and it is a Texan. So whatever we can do, I think would be a positive step. Is there any other penny else you'd like to speak? Morning, Deborah Blackall, Mister. Um, I do work near the border. I'm, I'm up here. It impacts us all over, and we are literally being told that it is secure by our government, and it is not. It is not secure, and they're using. We're accepting sound bites from people with bigger paychecks and lower IQs, telling us that this place is safe. It is not safe, and they're using the term invasion. We cannot declare it an invasion. By definition, it is an invasion. Yes. There is a goal, but they're hanging on that word, invasion, sort of like Bill did, what's the definition it is. This is an invasion, and it's impacting our families. It's impacting our safety. It is impacting everything. And things can be done. People constantly say, well, what would you do? Well, we saw it happen when we shut down transportation. Shut it all down. Not just one border state, all of them. Something can be done, and he's not going to do it during an election. We have to put pressure, and it has to come from the citizens, and y'all represent themselves. So I'm asking you to please do that. Thank you. My name is Mike Olcott, I live here in Parker County. Uh, this has been one of my hottest issues since uh, 2004. I've spent a lot of time at the border. I've seen the rape trees. I've talked to the ranchers who won't go to their mailbox without a sidearm. I've talked to the single mothers that pick up their children at school at 4 o'clock, rush home, lock their doors, and won't open the doors again until the next morning. Um, this has been a, a big issue at the border in the border counties all across the southern border since uh, probably 2000. It's, as Sheriff Hawkins just said, this is affecting all counties in Texas and probably most all counties in the whole United States. And, I'm convinced that the federal government is never going to secure that border. It's just not going to happen. And the only way it's going to happen is if states take action. And fortunately, our county fathers gave us the legal authority to do that in the Constitution. Um, the federal government is required under Article 4, Section 4, to secure that border to put it in the federal invasion. They're not doing it. But they also wrote that in, under the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, if states the right to take matters into their hand, the federal government won't do it. Um, likewise, Article 4, Section 7 of the Texas Constitution gives us the right to repel an invasion if the federal government won't do it. So, uh, what y'all are doing today is huge. Um, you know, as everyone in this room probably knows, there's been some border counties that have already issued similar declarations. Um, but I think once some of these interior counties start doing this and sending a strong message to Austin, that this is unacceptable and the people are demanding action and until the governor declares this an invasion and authorizes and orders the state guard to arrest, detain, and deport illegal aliens, this crisis is not going to stop. And I think it's not going to stop unless Texas leads the country and does something about it. Well, tax dollars, 
Marshall Parker County, the stand elsewhere, we do sign this declaration. I'm going to read the declaration, and, and, and the, the, we're, uh, what we're doing is basically asking our, our sheriff's office and our, our sheriff to do their job and to enforce the laws of the state. And uh, I think anything further than that would be something we'd have to ask our sheriff's office. But now, I don't, it's not going to be anything more than we're just going to enforce the law. So, nominees will be sent to the state for Parker County because of this declaration. Is that correct? No. Uh, under this particular order, there, there is not, but there's several counties that have committed uh, either support through their staffing, law enforcement, or through diversion of ARPA money. I think Montgomery County diverted six million dollars if they put a wall in more than the purpose of the wall. So the court can choose to divert some of the ARPA money and support that cost down there. They could also support it by sending law enforcement agents down to the border. The sheriff's deputies can be sent down. Uh, municipals, municipalities can join in on that order as well if they choose to do so. But that's a uh, determination for the court, and, but that's not this particular order at this time. Okay. I just want to point out that uh, in the 2008-2009, we, uh, we uh, had uh, the state budget at $110 million for border security. Last year, it was $3 billion. And uh, that does not include another half billion dollars that the governor transferred from other agencies after last year's uh, legislative session. Um, the, the, the Lone Star, uh, what they call it, the Lone Star, uh, Operation Lone Star did not work, has not worked. Our National Guard was down there. There were high suicide rates. They could not get paid because the state did not have enough money to do it. Um, this is a federal government issue, and it needs to be handled by our Congress and our Senate. And right now, the Senate uh, will not hear any bills. Nobody wants to tackle this immigration issue. It is the federal government's job to do this. We are very, very far away from the border here. I understand that the human toll, as you mentioned, uh, in the fentanyl, uh, the fentanyl that has come in and has been captured, the bulk of it has been captured in El Paso, and El Paso does not have these emergency stipulations in place. Uh, the drugs come in through our airports, not across the border. Uh, and that, that's also a fact. So uh, I have a real question as to what this means for Parker County. And again, what is in the declaration? Please read. And I, I will say there, there's one specific incident that we are, and the tax should be well aware of. We had an individual that was here illegally. He was convicted as a pedophilia, a pedophile. While he was incarcerated in Parker County, he incurred about $2 million worth of bills. That fell in Parker County, not the federal government. So that's one direct example that I'm aware of. The sheriff probably has multiple others. But I'm currently trying to cut those medical costs down. I've been successful in probably cutting to around 200000 but that's a direct impact in Parker County. Okay. Uh, I would like to, before we discuss this in the could we please have a public display of what these items are so that we can look at the federal government is going to do nothing to help us with the border. So whatever we can do for our uh, governor, I believe we're going to do. Well, I just want to add one thing. We're just going to be here at this point. I magistrate once a week in the location on weekends uh, with other judges. Uh, and it's prevalent in that, in, the, in that environment that, that we do that. But also the fact that we're having this on here is the fact that there is a lack of action from our, our, uh, our president. Uh, and the fact that they're not doing it the federal level is why it's come down to this level. And this is something that um, I think is, well, I was approached by probably more than 30, 30 to 40 people thanking me for this meeting yes. today. So, uh, Did your previous president do anything? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
My name is Amy Copper. I represent Wise County Conservatives. I wanted to thank this court for bringing this very important issue before the court today. This is uh, a huge act of bravery, and I believe that if this court passes this resolution, it will create an avalanche of North Texas counties to have some cover to be able to stand up strong and declare this invasion. You know, 160,000 Americans uh, and allies landed in Normandy in 1944, and 200,000 folks are crossing our border illegally every single month in the state. To give you some perspective, this is, an, this is an issue that we absolutely have to deal with. Amen. And the reality is, is that the federal government, as you so wisely stated, will never do anything. And in fact, you may make the argument that in the time that Texas has been part of the Union since 1845, they have continually ceded their uh, responsibility to protect our border. We cannot stand by and not do anything. To, uh, we have to provide a uh, every encouragement we can as counties to be able to uh, ask our governor to declare this an actual invasion for our one section town. So I appreciate you guys taking this up. Thank you so much.
drug and after its issuance with approval from the Berkeley County Commission's Court, it shall continue in effect until terminated by the county judge. Pursuant to this declaration, additional directives may be issued by the county judge at the time being necessary and relevant. The declare this 45th day of July 21st. Thank you all for coming to that. 